Welcome to Vanderpump Robs, a podcast about Hollywood. And this week is a seasonal gift of Christmas movies here on the podcast. Of course, I'm Rob Schulte. We all know this. And today I have a guest. You may have seen him on your television screens while watching Vanderpump Rules or recently supporting his good friend on Dancing with the Stars. It's the creator of Brad Tober, Brad Kearns. Welcome, Brad. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me, Rob. Yeah, I got to tell you, um, I did a podcast with a woman named Brittany, Queen Bee Show, on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And she was like, you got to get Brad on the pod. You got to get Brad on the pod. And I said, okay, I'll reach out. I'm I'm really glad we were able to make this work. It's uh, tis the season for podcast giving. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into the movie we watched, I just wanted to ask you, you know, we know you're in the VPR circle and that's the sort of thing that people probably have, who listen to this podcast have recognized you from. But are there any other like reality shows that are that you like to watch? Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I have some guilty pleasures. Um, at the top of that list is uh, Love Island. So yes, over the pandemic, um, <laughs> it's funny because actually Ariana and I got hooked on it and we went back and watched all of UK, all of Australia, and I'm finally caught up with all of US too, but oh. it is a dirty addiction. So my partner, her and I got into Love Island uh, this year. Okay. I know a little late to the game, but we were like, oh, there's no way. I mean, it's like every night. How would we? And then cut to a week that. later, and we're like, <laughs> why isn't there a new episode out yet? It hasn't launched. I know. But... It's crazy how obsessive you can get from it. <laughs> but uh, it's either between that or then we totally shift gears and watch uh, Survivor and then get sucked into that. You know, I used to watch Survivor back in the day, too, but I don't know why. I just fell off. It is night and day from what I remember back when it first started sure. to what it is now. There's like so many different twists and turns. But uh, our our newest addiction is the traitors. Oh so, yeah. Oh man, we watch we were, that's like with you all and uh, Love Island. We we're like we got to watch Australia. Exactly. And now we got to watch England. And then we, well, and they so pulled good. in um, they pulled in some recognizable names, but obviously, yeah. Um, I don't know. Did you if you watched season four USA or season five? But from season four Love Island, they pulled in a guy um, that was in the, like the final three. Yes, that was wild. Yeah, I know. He like <laughs> finished Love Island. I talked to him about it. He finished Love Island, and then. Got on a plane and went and did the traders. So you know what, I gotta, I gotta get into that inner circle. I think, I think I could be a good trader. Yeah, but yeah. um, we're watching a movie today, totally fiction here. Yeah. And I, I, it seems to me from what I followed on, on Instagram that you're, you're a movie person. You, you like to hit up some of the new ones. Is there a type of film you generally gravitate towards? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big movie buff. I feel like in my spare time, you can always catch me at the movies. Um, I'm sure you're familiar. AMC does that pass. So you can see oh, 12 yeah. month, movies a month. We take advantage mm -hmm. of it. A lot of us do. So, but I generally gravitate towards um, like suspense, thriller, scary horror. Um, yeah. That's like something it's so weird. I can do, I can come home after a long day and just throw on a scary movie and then go right to bed. And you know, people Same. think that's psychotic, but it's yeah. to me, it's like entertaining and relaxing. Um, that's what I typically go for. Yeah, I think that's why like true crime podcasts are also so big because like there's something comforting and knowing it's not happening to you. Right. But like But there's a level of interest around yeah, it. Yeah. It's like I'm I'm in it. I'm in it. Do you have a uh I mean, I know this answer changes from day to day, but do you have like a go to horror film that is your favorite? Gosh, I have you know, it's funny because I'm one of those people that I feel like I can't lock down a favorite and <laughs> commit to it. Like it is ever changing. Yeah. However, I mean, I would say like my favorite franchise is the Scream franchise. Um, it's hands down my favorite. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I'm excited to see where it goes for Scream 7 amidst the chaos that's going on right now. Um, but I also, The Conjuring is like a more recent one, I guess, classic that I like. Um, but I Very fun. go back to, I think they were made before probably you and I were even born. But I first found them in high school about When a Stranger Calls and When a Stranger oh, Calls Back. Yeah. For some, yes. something about those, like it's just such a simple plot, but the movie itself, I feel like for the time frame was done so well and how like in the, yeah. the sequel, the man paints himself like the walls and hides in the wall. It's like crazy, but I love those movies. And I love how like 
this is so silly, but like when he paints himself as the wall it is like a memeable moment too. Yeah. So like it enters the lexicon. People will use that oh, yeah. whether they've seen the movie or not. And I think that is something that I love from horror more than people probably even recognize that it gets put into the zeitgeist oh, yeah. sort of way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a huge scream scream head. When the first scream came out, I I specifically remember my brother was six years older than me, and so he got to see Scream first. And okay. my parents were not going to let me see Scream, even though I totally could have. Like, I was not yeah. <laughs> like too young. But <laughs> my brother's like, okay, since you can't go, I'm going to reenact the whole movie in our kitchen for you. And I was just <laughs> totally spoiled, totally everything. But like, I have this vivid memory and it was in the kitchen. So like when you get to the last yeah. scene of Scream, I was like, I can only ever think of my childhood kitchen when right. I watch this movie. I have it right back for yeah. you. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, today we are watching a horror movie and a Christmas movie. It's called Christmas Evil. And listeners, it's currently available on Tubi. And YouTube, if you do enough Googling. And uh, it's my favorite horror film. It's John Waters' favorite horror film, or Christmas film, I should say. It's from oh, 1980. Wow. Yes. I think John Waters does a screening every year for like friends and family in a theater of this film. It is okay. truly bizarre. But uh, the description for anyone who, who maybe is a little bit frightened to watch it goes like this. As a boy... He saw mommy making love to Santa Claus. As an adult, he is a crazed killer who keeps a list of all the nice and naughty children in his neighborhood. Obsessive? Yes, but not dangerous until he snaps, dresses as Santa, and takes out his obsession on all the naughty adults in his life. This Christmas, you better believe in Santa or else. So, um... <laughs> It's directed by Lewis Jackson, who didn't really go on to direct many more films after this, unfortunately. And it's starring Brandon Maggart, who was a like musical theater guy uh, until this movie, and I'm sure after this movie as well. Then went on to be, not went on, he is Fiona Apple's dad. Yeah. That is wild. <laughs> that is so wild. I saw that, and I'm a, I'm a big Fiona Apple yes. fan, so that was pretty cool. Yes, I have seen Fiona a couple times in concert, and it's always just... It's different. I love it when when a, like a true creative can just put on a new show every single time they're up there. Exactly. It's great. But uh, everyone, don't look at my ticket stub history because I did just buy tickets to Corey Feldman and Limp Biscuit. So <laughs> uh, I span the whole gamut. I just hey, that's all right. My my eyes spun oh, in my head when I saw these tickets going. I was like, "There's no, this is not." I okay. I just got to go to San Bernardino and see this. So let's get into it. The movie starts in suburban New Jersey on Christmas Eve, 1947. A young boy named Harry sees his mother getting busy with Santa, potentially his father dressed as Santa, and yeah. uh, it affects him and his uh, younger brother in ways that are we only see played out later in this film. Obviously makes Harry a little bit obsessed with Christmas and Santa Claus and makes his brother uh, super horny the rest of his life, as we see in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know, I will jump in right away yeah. and say the time frame of this movie. Obviously, I'm assuming it was made before you were even born sure. as well. Yeah. And it's so interesting because if you would make that movie now, there's probably so many elements of it that would be much more elaborated. Like when I read the description, it said like he saw his mom making love to Santa and it's like, he's just like touching her yeah. leg, you know, it's just, it's funny. You know? yeah. It's like a, a Christmas story, like the lamp. Yeah. Like that's all it is, yeah. is him just like caressing a stocking. Yeah. And, it's, <laughs> and he's just traumatized. <laughs> I cannot believe this. I must throw my yeah. snow globe on the ground. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we flash forward to the late seventies. Harry's an adult working as a manager in a like a low level managerial position in a toy factory called Jolly Dreams, where all of his colleagues make fun of him. Apparently, he used to be like an assembly line guy. He used to be a union man. Got promoted. Got yeah. promoted, and now you're. He's a. Uh, we're we're getting that 
that uh, American beauty, I hate my job, but I make a good living sort of life here. Yeah. Very uncomfortable for more than one reason. Um, at home, though, he's taken it upon himself to become the next true Santa Claus. Yeah. He spies on neighborhood children to see if they're being good or bad and keeps detailed <laughs> records of their behavior. Oh, yeah. In the bad book. <laughs> yeah. And, man, he is really uh, setting himself up for uh, a world of hurt if the cops ever had to come into his house because he's being good in his own mind. But man, you don't you cannot spy on children, Harry. That's no. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> I do love like I had to rewind because the bad kid he's fine. It's, I just loved it because like it's like Susie, she's good and she's like curtsying to her mom and like this yeah. person's good taking out the garbage. Moss Garcia is bad. He's just sitting in his bed, 10 years old, reading a penthouse. You're reading a penthouse, exactly. Cutting out the figure, yeah. <laughs> Getting ready for junior high lockers everywhere, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Harry's co-worker, Frank, the biggest, the biggest jerk of them all with the, the most ill-fitting bucket hat, I think. So he, <laughs> he asks Harry to cover a shift for him on the assembly line and so that he can go be with his family. And uh, unfortunately, he lied to Harry and he's been at the bar all night with his cronies. Um, Harry sees Frank drinking and uh, gets a little bit distressed. He goes back home, like holds a Ken doll, hums Christmas carols to himself and yeah. it, goes, it goes a little bit nuts, though. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it was interesting to see, yeah. It was almost like a, like a Hallmark film where a guy like just believes in Santa Claus. It's like, okay, you're a little quirky, yeah. but we'll put up with you. This is like, you're a little quirky until this moment where he goes fully off the rails. So Harry's distressed. And he decides we're right around Thanksgiving time. He calls his brother and he's like, you know what, Phil? I ain't coming to Thanksgiving. It's not going to happen. I, I need to be with my thoughts this holiday season. Right. At the uh, toy factory company Christmas party, the owners and like, this is just domino after domino. I got to put it like if, if, if the drinking wasn't one thing, now you're affecting Christmas toy giving it's it's i don't know um anyway the no. the the owner <laughs> announces that they will be donating toys to children at the local children's hospital that we, we love to hear it uh provided production increases sufficiently and the employees contribute uh with their own money so it's a it's a buzzworthy worthy like squirrel skiing moment for the news uh, to make them look good, but it's really on the backs of the employees. Now a question. Yeah. A question for you, Brad, there's a, there's a big monologue in this scene where Harry's like, um, you know, I know the tune you're dancing. We're dancing to the tune. Like, did you follow that at all? I think I kind of got what he was saying, but it was, <laughs> yeah, I did. I think, you know, it's, it was interesting. And like I said, I think that, the time frame of this movie, I think if it was made today, things would happen a little bit differently. But mm -hmm. I think the way they directed it and had him act was just really started to put pressure on him as to why maybe Christmas wouldn't be delivered the way he wanted it to. Yeah. So. It's a little bit of, uh, it's a little selfish, quite frankly. Yeah. Harry is, of course, very angry here. He doesn't like the execs for not caring about children. And so that night he fills bags with toys he stole from the factory and uh, other bags with dirt. I was a little lost at this point, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but I, but hopefully, you know, as I'm watching this, I was like, I'll, I'll, this will come into play at some point. It gets to Christmas Eve. Harry has decided I'm going full Santa mode and quite frankly, full Karen mode, if we're honest. But yeah. He a good mix. Yeah, he uh, glues a Santa beard to his face, puts on the suit, and enters what I can only assume is a fugue state to convince himself he's truly Santa Claus. Santa, yeah, yeah. I have to say though, this is one of the better Santa Claus outfits I think I've seen. 
I love the fur, yeah. you know, it's looking great. I mean, he even his, you know, you saw him use for like sphere gum to glue all that. But once it was on him, it, it looks pretty legit. Yeah. And I love the like darker fur around the collar. Like it's not just that yeah. cottony white that we normally yeah. get in the in a mall Santa Claus. This guy's doing it up right. Maybe next year he'll grow the whole beard, but you know. Yeah. That's for Christmas <laughs> Evil too. Um, yeah. Uh, so Harry, as Santa, starts doing his rounds in a creepy van that has like we've all seen the cool vans with like dragons painted on the side and stuff. But yeah, he's just hand painted a sleigh on the side of his "Do Not Enter Children" type of van. That's all I can yeah. describe. It's it a little as. foreshadowing, yeah. I think, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, surprising though, just not to jump too far ahead, that like. The children in this movie they are the only people who like support Santa Claus. They're yeah. Like, it's the parents that have the pitchforks and torches. Exactly. Yep. He first sneaks into his brother's home and delivers toys for his nephews. Okay. Good Santa move. He leaves a bag of dirt at the doorstep of bad boy Moss Garcia. Uh, I love that. Also, I don't know if you noticed this. Moss Garcia's mom is Jill from Home Improvement, Patricia Richardson. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, maybe the funniest person on that show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> later, <laughs> Harry drops off the toys at the hospital where he's greeted cheerfully by the staff, thank goodness. But things take a little bit of a turn when Harry's taunted by men when he's leaving midnight mass, or they're leaving midnight mass. They're leaving, yeah. And he's... He brutally murders them, but I kind of love this scene because this the movie you feel like it's like, okay, this is a horror movie. When is the slashering going to happen? Right. Like, when is it gonna turn to the killing? Because yeah, there's an axe on the cover of the movie, another cover has a knife. Like we really think that this is gonna be a, a Halloween type yeah. film. And uh when these guys leave Midnight Mass, they're just like asking to be murdered. They're yeah. like, hey, old chap, you got your bags with you? What are you doing it, tonight? It almost felt like they had been drinking, ironically, <laughs> you know? Drinking that midnight mass blood yeah. of Christ, that's for sure. Getting mm -hmm. Tipping the bottle a little too hard with the priest there. So, yeah, it's pretty brutal. It's for anyone who loves a good kill in a horror movie, this is where you get it. Uh, later that night, also, I lose all track of time in this film. I don't know about you. <laughs> Because if yeah, I, I do. It was interesting to see, like, from day to night, what's going on. But I want to say to you, in that scene, I thought it was so interesting how there is a large group of people that left Midnight Mass. Yes, and I think he ends up when you like see the like the bodies. There was probably like four men that he ended up killing. Yeah, but during that, and even after it happened, that crowd just like stands on the stairs. Two. They don't do anything. It was just interesting, you know? You would think someone would run back in the church and call the run police. Run back in the like, church do and try to tackle him. Yes. Yeah, but everybody just kind of like froze. And then as he like drives away, they finally come down. Yes. Yeah. I get a couple people screaming, like just being terrified and shocked. Sure. But that's not going to be everyone. You got to get out sure. of there. You got to do something. You got to... This, yes. is, this is a person... Hell bent on ruining Christmas. Um, yeah. <laughs> later, Harry is welcomed at a neighborhood Christmas party that's that must be rocking because it's past midnight mass. Everyone is like, you see the drinks getting poured throughout this whole thing. Um, yeah. But there's also a bunch of children there. So, I, yeah, it's <laughs> odd. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they think he's a harmless Santa impersonator. And at this point, he kind of is. He dances and cheers everyone up and makes sure that the attending children know that they have to be good boys and girls to receive their gifts. I will say, he does flip it onto a terrifying speech. He's like, or I'll give you something horrible, which is very scary. Uh, so yeah, Harry gives a little bit of a creepy speech to the children about presents. Uh, but after the party, Harry Claus breaks into Frank's home, kills him with a sack of gifts and a Christmas tree. 
uh, ornament and uh, or the star, I guess, and leaves the toys yeah. behind for the children. So sorry about your dad, but here's some toys. We love it. And also his wife doesn't even flinch no. right next to him as he's struggling in bed. Nope. Crazy. Nope. <laughs> uh, it's almost like this movie was written from someone who just doesn't know what a woman would do at all in a scenario. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but of course we have to get to Christmas morning. Santa suit disheveled and dirty. Harry returns to the toy factory and activates the assembly lines, breaking all of these sub par toys you know yeah he's got a mission and he's gonna do it later the neighborhood residents recognize him as the murderer and form a frankenstein-esque torch-bearing mob to pursue him they just don't uh respect the joy of christmas i don't think it is it's yeah. not there for them <laughs> they they don't call the police either. no <laughs> mob justice i think that's yeah it never goes out of style apparently yeah no it doesn't <laughs> Uh, Harry drives to his brother's house where he confronts his brother, Phil, accusing him to have been the root cause of their childhood trauma, not their kinky parents, as Phil was the one who revealed to Harry that he saw that Santa was his dad. Like, he somehow couldn't have come up with that himself. Right, right. (laughs) Uh, Phil realizes that Harry is the homicidal Santa if the creepy costume didn't do it justice chokes Give it away. Him, yeah chokes him unconscious and then uh for some reason puts him back in his van i don't know what yeah something was off right there yeah i i feel like they were trying to speed this film up they're like we just got to let's get to the ending i've got this this really great right. plan for the ending i just came out of greece and uh, i've got this idea <laughs> um But when Harry regains his consciousness, he punches Phil and then drives off. The angry mob forces Harry and his van off a bridge, and then the van flies into now the moonlight, because it's evening time now. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it was an interesting movie. Yeah. I have to say, too, did you notice, and maybe I missed something, but I went back and watched just the opening credits twice, because... It feels like the movie was called something else. Yes. Doesn't it? Yeah. I think Okay. That's the, I I at first I was like, Am I watching the right movie? And then I went back again, but then I was like, This is the right movie, but I can't remember what it said on the screen now. But uh, I was like I think originally it was called You Better Watch Out. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. I think might be a better I mean, I get the marketing of Christmas Evil, right? Like yeah. I can yeah. see that on a movie poster, but you better watch out. I think fits the tone a little bit more. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Final fa- thoughts on this film, Brad. Like, is it is it gonna be in the holiday rotation for you? Um, <laughs> I you know I don't know if I'll circle back on it this year, but uh, <laughs> it might be something that I I you know share with friends in the future. I think it'd be interesting if they did like a remake of it. Yes. You know, to, yes. Like a more modern twists on it because i think it has the storyline has a potential to be like a really good horror slasher you know what i mean yes absolutely i completely agree i you know i i'm not one of those people who are like oh they're remaking everything you know i don't if it's good remake it i don't care you know remake do it Yeah. yeah i i would love to see a remake of this and uh Maybe we'll just, you know, we'll crowdsource that. And like once I get all of yeah. the tons of comments coming in on this podcast, we'll see if people, you know, how much they really want it. But I'm all sure right. you could turn this into some sort of like holiday party drinking game sort of movie. Oh, like, yeah. This yeah, is... I think so, too. Some people have given me a little bit of flack for this, but like I think there are some horror movies that are really great background movies like party movies right and i think this falls in that category yeah i would agree it's like when you're making a playlist for a party and you throw in the one like weird throwback song that's more for people to go like oh i remember this than it is to actually dance to yeah then uh, i gotta ask you on a scale of one to nine reindeer what would you rate (laughs) christmas evil you know i'd probably give it a solid six. Okay, okay. Rudolph, yeah. Blitzen, Sleepy, <laughs> whatever the other one is, you're not on whatever here. Whatever the one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think six is is good. I, th- I think I'm going to go seven, though. I think yeah. I just, 
It's just so weird to me. It draws you in because yeah. of the weirdness. I think I would have scored it higher if maybe there was more killing in the beginning or something, you yeah. know? I was expecting like something slasher, like, yeah. you know, like nowadays, of course. typically a slasher opens up yeah. and then you build the storyline in. But this one just like built the storyline in until he finally lost it. But we did need that Drew Barrymore uh, popcorn scene. You know, yeah, we yeah, we needed yeah. that, and also I you can't give it a full nine reindeer because there's just some weird editing flubs in this movie too, like just stuff that like is chuckle worthy, but like I don't know if you noticed this at the beginning either, but like the family just like disappears from the stairs at one point, like it just like oh, blips. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. There was a couple editing things yeah. that I noticed actually. That now that you say that too, but. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is, and you said it earlier, the, the time thing. Oh, yeah. Like I felt like it would go from like night to day to day to night, and you're like, wait, what? What day is it now? Like what, what day? Is the time? What time? It jumps from yeah. Thanksgiving to Christmas Eve in the blink of an yeah. eye. Like very weird. But and then you know what? We didn't mention it either. But um, didn't he fill like he made those toys with um, oh like yeah. gunmetal or silver yeah. or. He like melted silver and then put it in the mold and that's how he killed them, right? Yes. I forgot okay. about that because I remember I had taken a note in my phone while watching this going, that dude is going crazy from those fumes too. Like that yeah. could have been part of it, the that psychosis. Could have been played into it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he had that like that toy soldier that went right through that guy's <laughs> eye. That was the first kill. <laughs> that is that is so brutal and I loved it. I I yeah. I need this. I hope we can make a remake of it. And, uh, you know, Hollywood, that's why we'd make this podcast. If you're listening, Brad and I are on, are on board to be executive we'll be producers. <laughs> you know, we got this. Well, uh, it makes you wonder why they never did another one, especially yeah. the way it ended. You know? Yeah. And it can't be, you know, getting the rights to this movie, I imagine, are, is not difficult. Like it's someone, not gonna be yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone's going to have it for you. And they're willing to yeah. sell, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. Well, Brad, once again, I really appreciate your time and you coming on the podcast. Can you let people know where to find you and if there's anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, across all socials, I'm at Brad by Brad, Brad X Brad. So um, I'm trying to build up my TikTok. I'm more new to that. But um, Instagram threads, you name it, that's where you'll find me. Um, something I want to plug right now is uh, I'm sure you know Jesse Montana. Yeah. Um, he just recently had kind of a... Um, a traumatic experience. So he woke up to some seizures to find out he had a brain tumor. So he just went um, under surgery. Sounds like surgery was successful, but of course, an unexpected expense like that is a big thing. So Joe, his partner, shared a GoFundMe. Um, the link is on both the Jesse Montana and Joe Newham's Instagram. I'll be posting it back in my story. We're so close to the goal. I think we were last time I checked at ninety one thousand three fifty. Oh, his goal of a hundred. Good. It is absolutely amazing. Um, the people that have shown up for this, whether it's a friend or a stranger, um, absolutely incredible. Um, so we'd love to, you know, hit that goal. We're just just a little over eight thousand dollars away. Um, and obviously, too, I want to take a second and on a, a positive note too, shout out uh, my friend Ariana. Yes. She's going to be hitting Broadway. So uh, very excited about that. Yes. Um, she will uh, star as Roxy Hart in Chicago and New York um, starting January 29th. So that's really exciting as well. Fantastic. I am looking forward to getting back on the East Coast and seeing if I can get a ticket to that for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love oh, yeah. I love Chicago as a musical. I was a graduated with a degree in theater so all of this is very exciting obviously i'm a fan of the show and a fan of ariana hey yeah. and now a fan of brad for coming on the hey. podcast so this is great Love to hear it <laughs> and i and i will say i listeners i'm putting a link to jesse's gofundme in the show notes so if you're listening to this podcast now you can just go to the notes and click it and if you've got awesome. five dollars or fifty dollars make sure you're going there. Uh, it's it's always it's the giving season, and when someone needs it, don't think twice. Um, Brad, thanks again for being here, and I will make sure when I put out my little video snippets of this to also tag your TikTok to help grow that audience I up. It. So, 
Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, Brad. And uh, listeners, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We will see you next time on Vanderpump Robs. Wait, Rob? Is that who we're talking about? Yeah.